This video is part of a series where we build an entire FPV drone from start to finish. So if it feels like you're in the middle of a conversation that you missed the start of, that's why. If you're here for the information in this specific video, keep watching. But if you want to find out the full context for what's going on here, there's a link in the video description to the full playlist, and you might need to go back and start with video number one. This is it. It is graduation day you are going to fly this quadcopter that you built with your own hands for the very first time. I'm so excited that uh, I'm so proud of you for having gotten to this step. And uh, it's such an honor that you uh, went through this process with me. Before we put the propellers on any new build, we need to do a fail safe check. We wanna make sure that if we lose link between the controller and the receiver, that the quadcopter will not just fly to the land of lost quadcopters and never come home again. Uh, so the way we're gonna do that is with the props off, we're gonna plug in the battery. Okay, once we get connection here, we're gonna flip the arm switch. The motors will begin to spin, and then we are gonna power off the radio. It's gonna give us a warning. Are you sure? The model is still powered. Yes, we're sure. And when you do that, the motor should stop, and the quadcopter may start beeping if you've configured it, which we have. That is the correct response. If you power the radio down and the motors continue to spin, something is wrong. Do not fly your quadcopter until you figure out why that's happening but this should work fine. Next, we're gonna put the props on. I have a whole video about propeller anatomy, how to tell what way to put the props on. I'm gonna ask you to pause this video if you're not familiar with props. I'm gonna put a link to that down in the video description below. You're gonna to wanna to check that out. It's just a perfect little encapsulation of the information you need, and it would be silly to just repeat all that information here. In short, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the prop we're going to identify the leading edge of the prop, which will be high. It will be up, up, and the trailing edge will be down. And we're gonna install the prop so that the leading edge faces out because we set our quadcopter up with props out rotation. If all of that made sense, then you don't need to go watch that other video. Well, go watch it another time. But if not, pause the video, go watch that other video. We are also gonna put these nuts on um, we're going to put the nuts on, and there's a little gotcha when you're putting the nuts on. Uh, it trips some people up. They install the nut, and then they go, but wait a minute. It's not all the way on. Is that correct? These nuts are uh, nylock nuts. They have a nylon insert to help keep them from backing out under vibration. And the first time you install the prop, you have to kind of compress that nylon nut, and it takes a little bit of force. You want to tighten that down until it presses on the prop. When it is correctly installed, the prop will be pressed up against the top of the motor bell and you will not easily be able to like cause it to slip against the motor bell. You don't want to over tighten it. Don't go crazy because if you over tighten it, you will stress the motor, uh, the, the prop hub and the hub prop may shatter in flight. Also do not use Loctite on these because the Loctite uh, solvent will damage the plastic and cause the props to basically shatter. So yeah, for me, after it makes contact, like here it's made contact, and I go maybe another quarter turn after that, I would say. Yeah, quarter turn. It's a good, that's good advice. At this point, you're probably pretty excited to get this in the air, but do not just arm, raise the throttle, and hashtag send it. We gotta be sure that it's not gonna freak out. And I wanna show you a little check that I do with every new build to ensure that it's not gonna freak out. I'm gonna plug the quadcopter in and I'm gonna set it down somewhere safe. And by safe, I mean somewhere far away from anything that would be bad if when I arm it, it freaks out and goes in an unintended direction, like people or you know, cars and stuff. Then I'm going to leave the throttle down and I'm gonna arm the quad and disarm the quad. Good, that worked as expected. Next, I'm gonna arm the quad and with the throttle down, do not raise the throttle, I'm gonna push forward gently on the pitch stick until I see the rear of the quadcopter begin to lift up. Okay, it did. It also tilted a little to the right. That could be suspicious. It could just be that it's on a rock or something. We're not gonna worry about that. Next, I'm going to move the roll stick to the left or right until I see the quad lean slightly in that direction. Yep, that was as expected. And 
I'm gonna move the yaw stick slightly until, it's, if it's on a, like a grass or something, it's not gonna to wanna to do this. It needs to be on a surface that you can kind of slide on. But I'm gonna move the yaw stick slightly and it, watch that it sort of turns the direction it's being commanded to. It did. In all of those cases, the quadcopter responded as expected. It did not go whoop and pop up in the air or do anything else weird. At this point, it is safe for us to arm the quad, raise the throttle and bring it to a hover, which I will do now. Now we can fly this thing. And how does she fly? Why is my video so shitty? Ah, I'm at 25 milliwatts, of course. We set the video transmitter to minimum power on the bench to keep it from overheating. Go ahead into your goggles and change it to the max power so you get better range and penetration. Here, I'll show you a little insert showing you how to do that for all three of the systems. For the walk snail system, go into the menu, go to settings, go to transmit power, and change the transmit power from 25 milliwatts to 700 milliwatts. If you've unlocked your walk snail system, you'll also have the option for 1000 and 1200 milliwatts, which you might think would be better because it's more power, but a lot of people's experience is that those don't actually improve performance and just cause your video transmitter to overheat faster. So you should change it to, 12, uh, to 700 milliwatts. In addition, I would suggest that you change your bit rate from standard to high, as long as you're flying by yourself or just with a couple other friends, um, if you do that, you will get a much better looking image. However, there will only be three channels available instead of eight channels or seven channels in the public channel. There will only be three channels available and means that if you're flying with a lot of other people, you would not have enough channels for all of them to fly at the same time. On the O3 Air unit, the output power is managed automatically, but there is a setting that you uh, want to adjust. Swipe right on the touchpad to bring in the goggles menu or on the Integra and V2, just click the joystick. Go down to transmission and I suggest that you change channel mode from automatic to manual and bandwidth to 40 megahertz. This will give you the best looking image. If you are flying with other people, change that back to auto and let the goggles to avoid interfering with other devices. But if you're flying by yourself or other people who know how to manage channels, set that to manual and bandwidth 40 megahertz for the best looking video. For the analog system, you're gonna bring up a menu in your goggles by centering the throttle, and then you're gonna push yaw left and pitch forward like this. Bear in mind, if you do it too long and hold it, the menu will just kind of open and close repeatedly. So you just gonna to wanna to kind of blip it, yaw left, pitch forward. Once you're in the menu, use the right stick to go up and down and go to features, and then use the right stick to the right to go into the menu. Go down to VTX, and right stick right to go into the menu. And this is where you can change the channel, 87654321, and output power of the video transmitter. Go ahead and take that output power from 25 all the way up to whatever the max value it is. I believe it's gonna be 600. And when you do that, then go to save and yaw right and confirm and yaw right. Once that's done, then to leave the menu, press right on the yaw stick and you'll get the save exit menu and save and exit by going down with the right stick and, and the right stick to the right. That all sounds a little bit like left stick, right stick, right, left, up, down, but it does become second nature over time. Okay, let's try again.
That's it, you did it, enjoy flying. I'm gonna potentially make more videos in this playlist, so come back from time to time. For example, could we add a GPS to it? Could we add remote ID to it? I know, I know, I know. So, uh, but that's gonna do it for this initial series of the videos. Congratulations on having gone through this whole process. You did great, I'm so proud of you. And I can't wait to see what you're gonna do with this quad and all the quads you build from here on out. Happy flying.